This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For the word says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I say, run, Mary, run, because heaven is shining. I say, run, Mary, run. I've been running all day long. I say, run, run Mary, run, because heaven, heaven is shining. I say, run. You know there is a little table And on that little table You know there is a little book And in that little book You know there is a piece of writing And none can read that writing But the Holy Sanctified Sand. Gonna shout my troubles over. I done made it to the promised land. I said, Run, run Mary, run, run, because heaven. Read it when I'm dead. You can weep just like a willow. You can moan just like a dove. But you can't get to heaven lest you go by love. Well, some say, give me silver, and some say, give me gold. But I say, So I said, run, run Mary, run, because heaven. Oh, I said, run, run, Mary, run. You know that I've been running all day long. Amen, amen. Lord God, we thank you for a word that reminds us to keep on running. God, we thank you for the spirit that invites us not to give up. God, we thank you for a testimony that they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So God, today on this worship Sabbath, we give you praise for giving us the energy to run through January, February, March, April, May, June, and July. We thank you, God, for being with us thus far along the way. And we pray, God, that as the word is preached and as the spirit is lifted, you would indeed change hearts, minds, souls. And God, you would bring us close to your heavenly throne in grace. We ask this prayer in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Let all who believe say amen. Amen. Run, Mary, run. I write my testimony with a sword in the sand. Oh, what a joy it is to be reminded of the songs of old, but most importantly, the spirit that leads us into worship. An appropriate song it is as we look at three characters for the next couple of Sundays, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And today, talking about Mary, I thank Dr. Monroe for running Mary up the street and down the corner. 
to be a part of this worship service. If you have your word, I invite you to turn to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, from a New Living Translation of the Word. Thank you, Minister Dana, for leading us in prayer today. Thank you, Minister Donna, for leading us in the sermon last week. And we know that God continues to work uh, through men and women through the gospel. Pastor Lanson and Dr. Carroll, our virtual pastors now, are online there to help and minister to you. Luke chapter 10, verses, verses 38 to 42, let us hear the word of Almighty God. And as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if I could, I would like to call your attention to verse 42 of this pericope, for it serves as the backdrop and the background of our preaching moment. For verse 42 simply says, and there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. There is only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it. With the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement in your homes, in your living room, on your car, or wherever you may be a part of this service, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment preach on our subject, discovering the truth. Discovering the truth. My friends, sometimes we have difficulty trying to figure out what makes people do the things they do and say the things they say and wear the things they wear and stay where they stay and walk the way they walk and hang out with the folk they hang out with and give what they give and eat what they eat and smoke what they smoke and laugh like they laugh and cry like they cry. Sometimes, y'all, we on the outside have difficulty understanding those on the inside and we have a challenge trying to figure out why people do what they do. And this came to the forefront in my uh, kind of contemplation over the last month, y'all, particularly trying to figure out why people have a sense of affirming things that are not true, but making the narrative seem as though they are. Let me explain it this way. It came to my con concentration, y'all, on why do people want to legitimize relics and shall we say items that are not true to what they are really presenting. It's for instance, why is it that we have military bases named after Confederate folk who did not represent Union but represented division? Confederate folk like Fort Bragg in North Carolina, military installations like Fort Jackson in South Carolina, military installations like Fort Lee in Virginia. Why is it that we had schools named after Confederate leaders, schools like Robert E. Lee High School, schools like Stonewall Jackson uh, a Training School, schools like Zebulon Vance, 
high school here in why is it that we would have monuments put up on street corners monuments that represented division as instead of inclusion you see if you don't know why people did what they did you would keep on affirming a false narrative let me break it down like a fraction and give it to you this way you see I discovered y'all that the truth behind naming military bases and the truth behind naming high High schools and the truth behind naming institutions and statues y'all was not to honor a southern heritage as much as it was to put fear and trepidation in the liberation of people of color the truth y'all of why society has affirmed and put up these segregated kind of sit symbols y'all was not to bring us together but to put us apart why else would you put a statue y'all a Robert E. Lee and in the downtown section of Baltimore, Maryland, except to divide and to conquer. Why else would you name schools after Confederate soldiers that tried to divide us, soldiers that should have been tried for treason, tre treason, y'all, but instead we honored them because they represented white supremacy. And once you know the truth, you will also understand why people would defend a lie. Let me back it up and say that again. Once you know the truth, you will also understand why people will go to the up degree to defend a lie and that is not the gospel because the gospel says ye should know the truth and the truth shall set you free somebody type amen in the chat box right there because you know the truth has set you free from some stinking thinking the truth has set you free from some toxic behaviors the truth has set you free from being think or believing that you can't do anything my bible says i can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. My Bible says that I am the head and not the tail. My Bible tells me that I all things are possible to those that believe. How do I know that? Because that's the truth. The truth is that you are made in the image of Almighty God. The truth is that God loves you so much that God gave God's only begotten Son. The truth is that you can do anything that God says you can do because that's the way God has made you. When you know the truth, you will understand the difference of somebody's story. Come here, Viola Davis from, from St. Matthew, South Carolina. Viola Davis pretty much from Calhoun County, South Carolina. Where is Calhoun County? Outside of Columbia, 21 miles away from Orangeburg. Where is Calhoun County? Calhoun County, y'all, is a birthplace of Viola Davis. Viola Davis, y'all, is the winner of what we call the trifecta in, 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 in acting. What's the trifecta? She's got a Tony, she's got an Emmy, and she's got an Oscar. You missed it. She's got a Tony, she's got an Oscar, and an Emmy. This woman from Calhoun County, South Carolina, y'all, that is barely on the map, less than 2,100 folk in the whole city, y'all. This is the person who reigns from Calhoun County. Now, what's her story, y'all? Her story is that her mother was a domestic. Her story, y'all, is that her father was a laborer. Her story, y'all, is they left the South, migrated to the North. She was raised in Rhode Island, and while there, y'all, she experienced poverty. While there, y'all, she experienced abuse. While there, y'all, she was told she was nobody. But let me go back to Viola Davis. Cause did she not tell us in the help, you is smart, you is kind, and you is important. Can we come on, Viola Davis? Help me understand how to get away with murder Viola Davis from Calhoun County. Her story, y'all, is that she recognized she could not just stay living in a poverty mindset, but she had to be elevated to where God wanted her to be. That is why Viola Davis, the winner of the trifecta, a Tony, a Oscar, and an Emmy, y'all, is able to say it's not where you start, it's how you end up. It's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. It's not your, your surroundings this is how you involve and elevate the surroundings around you. When you know the story, y'all, you will understand her glory. Come on, let's go to the text, because I don't want you to forget it. You see, Minister Dana, what's important in this story of Mary and Martha, it comes to us on the heels of Jesus preaching about the Good Samaritan. So what better way, Minister Donna, for us to understand that Jesus gives an example of feeding the least of these, doing
doing great things on the heels of the Good Samaritan when he goes to a dinner party. Mary and Martha and Lazarus are welcoming Jesus to their home. Jesus, 13 brothers, uh, not counting women and children, Dr. Monroe, show up to Martha's house. Middle-aged men with an appetite. Middle-aged men hungry. Middle-aged men walking. And Martha and Mary are preparing. What happens at the scene, y'all? That they come into the house. Now, don't get it twisted. Mary did some work. But when Jesus showed up, Mary started listening. Mm, let me back it up and say that again. Mary did some work. Martha did some work. But the text says when Jesus shows up, Mary started listening. Whew. One more time. You see, you can be busy working, but when Jesus shows up, you need to start listening. You can be busy doing things in the church, but when Jesus, the Holy Spirit, shows up, you need to raise holy hands in the air like you just don't care and give God praise because Jesus is in your midst. The Bible tells us, y'all, is that as Mary and Martha are preparing to welcome Jesus and his entourage, Jesus and his disciples, it's easy to imagine that Martha wanted Mary and, and everybody else to make things perfect for Jesus. For it is, you don't invite the preacher to your house unless things are in order. Somebody say amen. And if I know it's social distancing and all, you don't have to invite me to your house, but a gift card from Grubhub will help. Somebody say amen. I ain't hating, just stating. Let's go ahead to the text. You see, what happens in the text, y'all, <laughs> is that Mary and Martha are preparing this great dinner party. This posture that Mary assumes is unique because she is at the feet of Jesus, of the rabbi, Teaching. That's why Paul says in the books of Acts, Acts 22, when he sat at the feet of Gamaliel, that he's at the feet of a scholar. And this position, y'all, was reserved for men. But here, Mary, a woman, was at the feet of the teacher. Don't miss that, sister, because this is your liberating moment. Because don't ever let it be said that you as a woman cannot sit at the feet of the one who gives you power. Don't never, never, ever be, never let it be said that a woman can't preach the gospel and learn how to evangelize the gospel because Mary teaches us right here in the text that in Jesus Christ, there is no male or female, black or white, young or old, rich or poor, English speaking or none. English speaking. You are all a child of Almighty God. But the text tells us is that Martha got an attitude with her sister Mary. Martha did nothing wrong in working hard for Jesus. That was good. However, it was not the best. Martha, y'all, she did a good job preparing for, for Jesus. It wasn't the best job. You see, what's important to understand at the jump, jump of this text, y'all, is that Martha and Mary are sisters working together for a common cause. Martha did a good thing, but it wasn't the best thing. And I want to caution you this Sunday morning, those who are watching this CD, excuse me, watching this video, those who are, are observing either on a Sunday or some other time, we must never get satisfied with good things when God calls us to the best thing. You need to tweet that right there. Never get satisfied with the good thing when God is calling us to the best thing. All right, let me say it this way. Good is the enemy of best. And y'all, that is pointed out in the way of saying that we cannot possibly settle, shall we say, for what is good while sacrificing what is best. Settling for what is good, though less than the best, means that we are willing to accept what is inferior. And I don't think anybody could have said this any better than the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King in his speech to high school students in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His speech was called Your Life Blueprint. And in the Life Blueprint speech, Dr. King, y'all, he elevated the point that you got to have a blueprint for your life. And that blueprint for your life always calls for the best and not just being good. But Dr. King articulated this point 
so well. He says, just don't set out to be a, do, to do a good Negro job, but do a good job. Matter of fact, he says, don't set out to be just a good Negro doctor or a good Negro lawyer or a good Negro school teacher or a good Negro preacher, a good Negro barber or a good Negro skill laborer or a good Negro beautician. He says, set out to do the very best because if you flunk, you if you do the job just to be good, you've already flunked the matriculation exam for the entrance into the University of Integration. Go ahead, Dr. King, because what he said, y'all, you need to set out to do your best and do that job so well that the living and the dead, the unborn, couldn't do it any better. He goes on to quote that great, that, that great uh, philosopher who says, if it falls upon your lot to be a street sweeper, then sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures, sweep streets like Beethoven composed music, sweep streets like Leotine Price sang before the Metropolitan Opera and sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great sweet street sweeper who swept his job so well. Martha, y'all, did nothing wrong in working hard for Jesus. That was good. However, it was not the best. And I don't know who I'm talking to this Sunday morning, but God told me to stop by your house, stop by your living room, come into your car and stop you on your walk through the nature park to let you know stop trying to be good and start doing your best. Stop just settling for good and strive for your best. Let me see if I can illustrate this to you because when you start and you settle for good, then you will, then you will get distracted on being your best. Distractions, distractions, distractions. It comes to us all. It comes to us from, 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 the, from the music ministry to the pastoral ministry, from, from the leadership, elders, deacons, trustees. Everybody gets distracted. Go ahead and just type distracted right there. Matter of fact, you watching this video now and somebody calling you and ringing your doorbell and you done got distracted. So let's go ahead and say, amen, Reverend. I do get distracted. Amen, amen. But, but, but here's what happened. Last week, last week, y'all, last week, about distraction last week last week while trying to be super dad and, and superman at my house uh, you know and running things because you know I run things at my house that's right I run the dishwasher and I, I, I run the vacuum cleaner and I run the iron over wrinkled clothes yeah I run I run things at my house so so as I'm running things at my house y'all I'm also trying to be this super person and 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 I I couldn't find the toaster so I decided to to make some old-fashioned toast and I open up the oven, put the bread on that top rack, and cut the oven on broil. Cut it on broil, y'all. And, and I said, while the toast is toasting, I'm going to run out to the car and, and move a car out of the way so that once my toast is done, I can put it together with my breakfast sandwich, and I'm going to run to the, because I run things, I'm going to run to work. That's what I was going to do, y'all. But when I got in the car, when, and I started backing it up, I started listening to the radio, and the radio, y'all, it it had one of my some one of my summer jams on it, y'all. And as I listened to it, I couldn't get out the car because I had to listen to the whole song. It was my summer jam, and and you can't get out of the car when your summer jams on. And plus, I had to wait to the chorus, you know, because the words were the night is young and full of possibilities. Well, come on and let yourself be free. My love for you, for you, for you. So long I've been saving it. Tonight is for me and you. And the chorus, you know what? You can ring my bell. Ring my, ring my bell. Ring. And you can ring my bell. Oh, I was jamming. I'm jamming in the car. Ring my bell, y'all. I'm singing the song. I come in the house and when I come in the house I can smell my toast 
My toast was burning, my toast was burning. My... See, I got distracted, y'all. I got distracted with ring my bell and forgot about browning my toast. Can I help you this Sunday morning? Because somebody can testify right there. You've gotten distracted from being focused on Almighty God to start focusing on some mess. You have gotten distracted, my friends, from being prayerful to now being prideful. You have gotten distracted, my friends, from lifting up holy hands to holding them down and say reservation because you concerned about what other folk will say. No, sugar baby, when God has done something good for your life, when God has lifted you up, when God has made a way out of nowhere, when God has come through in your midnight hour, when God has answered a prayer that only God can answer, don't you get distracted. That's when you enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and you give God or maybe a shout of hallelujah. Won't you just take some time right there and give God some praise and shout right there that you didn't get distracted in COVID-19. You didn't get distracted when you got laid off. You didn't get distracted when you didn't get your unemployment. You did not get distracted when Junebug got sick. You did not get distracted when Big Mama left this world. You did not get distracted, but you kept your eyes on Almighty God. The good news, the good news is that we sometimes, y'all, can get distracted by doing good and not doing the very best. If we, would, if, we, if we would be strong for service in the strength that prevents distraction and unrest, we must know what it is to find time for the duties of life to sit at the feet as a disciple, the city defeat his disciple. And this is what I want just to lift up in the text this Sunday morning, that you will recognize that God has called you and me to be disciples, to sit at the feet of the one who saves and the one who gives strength. Martha's frustration, y'all, is typical of those who diligently serve with good intent, but forget also to sit at Jesus' feet. Martha's, Martha's spirit says, let's get the work done. The spirit of Mary as whether Jesus is pleased with the work we do. Don't miss that. Martha wants to get the work done. Mary is saying, with the spirit of us doing the work, please, almighty God. And the Bible says, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen a good part. The New Living Translation says, and Mary has discovered the truth. You see, one thing, one thing, Martha, we can almost sense the love of uh, and Jesus' voice uh, and when he said, Martha, Martha, but don't forget what the psalm writer said. The psalm writer said, this one thing I desire of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Understand the one thing that God is calling us to do, the best thing that God is calling us to do, to be in the presence of Almighty God. Let me move quickly because I want you to get to the one thing that's going to help you become an even faithful, more dedicated disciple in the word. There are five, five truths to which I call that comes from discovering the truth. Five elements, five points, lessons learned. And the first, y'all, is to sit at the feet of Jesus implies readiness to accept and to obey what Jesus commands. To sit at the feet of Jesus calls us to obey what Jesus teaches. How important it is for us to never forget that we are taught to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. How important it is for, for us to remember we are taught through the Holy Word not to steal and not to kill and not to covenant and, and not to bear false witness. How important it is for us to not just learn these things but to apply these things. And if we are going to discover the truth, we have to listen and follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Christ. We have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ knowing that it is there to give us the truth that lifts our lives. What is the truth? Galileo says it this way. It says all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them. All truths are 
easy to understand once we discover them, but the point is we've got to discover them. Come here, Reverend Fred Rogers from the Mr. Rogers neighborhood, good Presbyterian preacher. What did you say? Discovering the truth uh, about ourselves is a lifetime work, but it's worth an effort. It is there. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. I like that. I like that. And, and here's one you, you got to hear. The ancient proverb says it this way. Three things can, cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. The truth. You've got to discover the truth of, of God and discover the truth that God makes a way out of nowhere and discover the truth that God sent God's only son so that we may have life and have it abundantly. You must discover the truth to know that God is with you, not just in troubled times, but God is with you in good times. You, you have to recognize that one thing that Jesus told Martha that Mary had was the truth, and the truth was the be in his presence. On, on, on the mountain of truth, you can never climb in vain. Either you will reach a point higher up today and you will be training your powers to climb even higher on tomorrow. You have to reach the truth that God wants you to have the very best. Number two, the number second lesson from this text is, is that to sit at the feet of Jesus implies submission because rebellion is done. It's over with. When you sit at the feet of Jesus, you understand that, that those things that I want to do are no longer important as those are that God wants me to do. When you sit at the feet of Jesus, you recognize not my will, but thy will be done. When you sit at the feet of Jesus, you quote Paul who told the church at Rome that you have to understand, be not confused form to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you sit at the feet of Jesus, number three, you understand that Jesus implies faith, faith that is faith in who Jesus is. Faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Faith in Jesus Christ, the Chosen One. Faith in Jesus Christ. And what does the word tell us in Corinthians? When you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When you are a new creature, you get away from stinking thinking. When you are a new creature, you get away from negativity. When you are a new creature, you see the glass not as half empty, but half full. Full. And knowing that God can give a half full glass, God can fill up the rest with this power and glory. You ought to give God thanks right now that God reminds you regardless what's in your cup, God provided the cup. Regardless what's in your glass, God gave the elements to make the glass. Regardless what you hold, God gave you filling in your hands to hold it. Give God thanks right now because God is still in the miracle working business. God is still in the power of a transforming life. God is still in the business of lifting folk up when they are down. Recognize that when you are in the, in the presence of Almighty God, you have what Paul says to the church at Philippi, that one thing, I count myself not to be apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press on to the mark of Almighty God. I press on to the prize before me. I press on to be in the presence of Almighty God. When you recognize that you can get some lessons from being discovering the truth, the four things you sit at the feet of Jesus, and it applies discipleship, discipleship discipleship. Type discipleship right there in the chat room because I want you to come back to it and see it for yourself. Discipleship. Discipleship. I'm talking life on life. Discipleship. I'm talking about showing the way. Discipleship. I'm doing, talking about doing things not for yourself, but to help somebody else out. Come here, Reverend C.T. Vivian. You can help me illustrate this. Reverend C.T. Vivian passed a couple of weeks ago, and he, along with Congressman John Lewis, were some of the last, last generals of the civil rights movement. And Reverend C.T. Vivian helped us realize is that not what I do for myself or for my own kind that lifts up 
others, but it's what I do for everybody. You do know that rising tide lifts up all ships in the harbor. Let me say that again. A rising tide lifts up the yachts as well as the, yo the rowboats. A rising tide. It lifts up pontoon boats and it lifts up those boats with the mercury engine behind it. Rising tide. Reverend C.T. Vivian, who started what we call uh, uh, the promise. It was the, the, the promise help. Reverend C.T. Vivian, it was a vision program called Promise that elevated to what we know as Upward Bound. And Upward Bound was a program that helped every child get to college. You missed your shout right there. There's some Upward Bound folk. If you can't spell Upward Bound, just type U-P, U-B, Upward Bound. You see, Upward Bound was started by Reverend C.T. Vivian as a promise to give every child, black and white, Spanish-speaking and English-speaking, uh, 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 Mandarin or whatever language, a chance to be upward, to move upward. And Reverend Vivian said, though it may look like a program for people of color, it's for everybody. You missed it right there. A rising tide lifts all ships in the harbor. And y'all, when you do something good for the glory of God, it's going to lift up every ship, everybody, those who know and those who don't know, those who appreciate it and those who don't know how to say thank you. You just keep doing the will of Almighty God. Why? Because you are a disciple. Let me close with my last point here because I told you there was five things. And the fifth lesson we learned from discovery and the truth is to sit at the feet of Jesus implies love. To sit at the feet of Jesus implies love. Jesus says uh, to Martha, 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 why are you worried about so many other things? You need to be focused on the one thing, the main thing, and the main thing, y'all, is to be in the presence of Almighty God. Okay, you're not getting it. The main thing that God has called me to preach today is not not that we look or discount work in the church, but we have to understand worship has to come before work. You see, what we miss sometimes, y'all, is we try to get to the outward expression without having an internal connection. What we miss sometimes, y'all, is we try to stay busy being busy without bending our knees and giving our petitions to Almighty God. The thing we miss in the church world, y'all, is we check off a bunch of boxes and we cross a lot of T's and dot a lot of I's and we got a resume that's replete with activity, but how much time are are we spinning with the Lord in prayer? You see, don't let your outward control your inward. Martha, you're doing a good thing, but the best thing is to spend time with me. The best thing is to let people know that I love you so much that I gave my only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have the best thing is to spend time with, okay, you're not feeling, so let me close it this way. You, you thought I was just talking about Viola Davis because she was a winner of the trifecta of the Emmy of, of the of the Tony of the of the of the of the of the Emmy the Tony what's the other one what's the the Oscar the Oscar the Oscar the Oscar that's that that that's the big one that's that that's what you is kind you is important <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what that one was. The Tony was for Fences, and that was a major movie, too. The Emmy was, was How to Get Away with Murder. But, but, but that's not what puts her on the map. What puts her on the map, y'all, is that Thursday, Thursday, she was lifted up as the spokesperson, y'all, for No Kid Hungry. No Kid Hungry is a program that incorporates politicians as well as volunteers to make sure that no child goes to bed hungry anymore. And these yet to be United States of America. We have multi-million children going to bed hungry. And Viola Davis, y'all, is now the spokesperson for No Kid Hungry. Okay, you got getting it. No Kid Hungry, y'all, says even in the coronavirus pandemic time, it is now triple in terms of how kids go to bed hungry. They don't have school to go to, even though they have lunch at school. But if you ride the bus to get to school to get your lunch, but you don't have a car now to go to the school that you rode the bus to get your lunch, you still go to bed hungry. And what Viola Davis has said is that I will not forget where I've come from. Because I told you she's from Calhoun County, South Carolina.
Carolina, and she was raised in Rhode Island. But while in Rhode Island, Viola Davis said she used to wrap a scarf around her neck because the rats in her apartment was so big that they would scratch them at night. Viola Davis said that she was arrested for stealing food so she could eat by a grocery store owner. Viola Davis says she remembers going to school hungry, and the only meal she got that day was the free lunch that she got from the school, which coincidentally, instead of y'all getting another stimulus package, we need to write to Congress and ask them to give free lunch for everybody, regardless of their economic condition, not just because you are qualify for free and reduced lunch, but every child that goes to school who get a free library book ought to get a free lunch. That's all I'm going to say about that. But Viola Davis, y'all, she helps me shout today because she remembered where she has come from. And she says, I'm not going to let the Oscar and the Tony and the Emmy forget that I used to go to bed hungry. I'm not going to let my claim to fame on being on the big screen top stop me to forget that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, if it had not been for God making a way out of no way, if it had not been for God speaking into my situation, I might not be on this stage. She says my purpose is not to be an actress or a producer or, 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 or some, great, some, some great person on the screen. My purpose is to add value. And somebody hear what I'm saying. Whatever you are doing, that's not your purpose. What you are, your purpose is always to add value to some Somebody else. I think the most best way to end this, Dr. Monroe, is to go Mahalia Jackson on us this morning. Because what did Mahalia Jackson say? If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or song, if I can help somebody who may be who may be going wrong, then my and turn them around, then my living may not be in vain. Hear what I'm saying friends. God is speaking to you this Sabbath day. God is speaking to you on the day that you hear this sermon. That God is saying don't forget where you come from. Don't forget how God has blessed you. Don't forget you got a platform. Yes, you are a doctor and a lawyer and a principal and a teacher. That's not your purpose. That's just your platform. Yes, you are somebody who have resources. That's not your purpose. That's your platform. And from your platform, you got to reach out and help somebody. Reach out and minister to somebody. Reach out and let somebody know that God will make a way out of no way. God is still on the throne. God is still answering prayer. God is still able to heal. God is still able to deliver. Let somebody know that your living will not be in vain. You know that you make a difference. And because you make a difference, we want to stay connected to you. So please subscribe to our website, subscribe to the, to the Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay connected. Join us each morning, Monday through Friday, for our prayer time. We'd love for you to be a part of that as we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. The Minister Dana, thank you for being with us today. To our musicians and staff, thank you for being here. For our AV ministry, for our centurions, for our health ministry, COVID-19, we appreciate all that you're doing for us. Do know we love you. God loves you. We hope to see you next week. Y'all have a wonderful day. Until next week, God bless you. We'll see you.